Here's the dirty secret of social media, folks. I'll let you absorb it for a second. That almost everyone will miss almost everything you do on social media. It's really sad. And the people who hate social media then say, aha, that's why this is a waste of time. But this is true about every medium. I'm on, uh, I, I do a lot of stuff in, in different other forms of journalism, not just social. And almost everyone misses almost everything I do there as well. So it's not unique just to social. But social can help you direct attention to the things that you care about in ways that were never possible before. And better use of hashtags can make a difference. And that's the case I'd like to make today. But most media organizations are not using hashtags as well as they could or should. So we can learn from all kinds of folks. First, you can learn from my wife. Her Twitter handle, as you can see there, is at Rupa Online. And she tweeted uh, something about a, uh, an unfortunate incident at the Crumbs Bake Shop. And you folks are probably familiar with Crumbs. It's actually a terrific brand, and our kids love Crumbs. And uh, there are no calories in the Crumbs cupcakes, if you, uh, uh, if you know them. No, actually, they're, they're just really good. But she had a, an experience that she wasn't happy with with my daughter. And she tweeted this, and she put the hashtag on there. And you would think that you know, nothing would come of these complaints and whatever happens. Well, they not just wrote a note to her, uh, kind of an apology, an email, which I like the idea of using email in an, even in a time of social media. But they also started following her on Twitter. Right? That's this new world where people are, are keeping track and trying to connect in ways we may not have thought of before. Here is another way, that, another place you might see a hashtag. And this was a fun, fun thing. My uh, friend, Jim Rosenberg, who runs social media at the World Bank, that's, he is a, uh, that's what he does there. He went to talk in Tokyo. and. Someone had pre created a hashtag just for his conversation. And he put this on Facebook. And he said, this hashtag won't help my humility, guys. And that's when you, when you have your own hashtag. That's pretty interesting. And this is also one of the things we see with social media is that it's not all restricted to the medium that you, are, you expect it to be in. Right? So here is something that this was a paper, something stuck on a wall in Tokyo, but then Taken, a photo was taken and stuck on his Facebook wall. There are right ways and wrong ways to do hashtags. And on a certain Sunday this past uh, spring, I saw it done the right way and the wrong way. This was during the Daytona 500. And you can see here, hash Daytona 500. And the hashtag stayed on the screen most of the day. I also like that they had hash rain delay. In the old days, meaning before this, if you, if you uh, tuned into something and you saw a rain delay, they would have this crawl going across the screen. You don't need that anymore. You just put hash rain delay. And the other nice thing they did here was they helped viewers know the right Twitter handle of the guests. It's often confusing at conferences, at events, where you have someone speaking, but there's no indication what their Twitter handle is. Especially on TV, uh, I, I think people should be highlighting the Twitter handles as much as possible, and of course, the hashtags. And the other thing that I think about with social, with social media and with hashtags is that people are going to talk about you anyway. And they're talking about you all the time. And by giving them a hashtag, you put a digital fence around what they're saying. And you have a chance to look at it. I use the hashtag three tips. Or for today, there's also, of course, three TED, I mean, there's TEDx, hash TEDx pointer. And I call that the ability for you to write about me behind my back to my face. So I can go back and kind of look at it and then see and get your feedback. So the conversation continues well past today. So this was the right way to do hashtags on TV. Here's the wrong way. This was a hashtag during the Oscars that they ran at the bottom of the screen. And they flashed it only when they went to commercial break. And when you go to commercial during the Oscars, that's when everyone runs to the bathroom. And they ran it. And they'd also run it over the images of who's coming up next. So you have George Clooney, or you have, uh, you have these uh, actresses. You have all these folks who are on there. You know, uh, people are looking, instead of looking at the hashtag, they're looking at the face of the person. So think about the context with where you're putting the hashtag. I think that's going to be important. 
Here's a hashtag that uh, came out of uh, another series of uh, events that got a lot of attention, and this was the hash Jan 25. And you know the, the January 25th uh, Egyptian revolution from now two Januaries ago. And this is an example of how the State Department uses uh, social media. You know, when they're evacuating out of Tahrir Square and out of Cairo, they're not sending you an email saying, would you like to join us or a limo? They're just tweeting it out. And that's why you have to pay attention to hashtags. And by the way, at TravelGov is one of just a handful of uh, Twitter handles that I tell everybody to follow in uh, via your cell phone's SMS, so you get an alert every time. So I do TravelGov, I do my uh, wife's Twitter handle, which is at Rupa online, my father, and at CDC Emergency. And the reason you do that is because that's the only way I'll know when the zombies come. So I'm ready for that. By the way, someone looked at this and said, you know, this is not just what's happening in Tahrir Square. What this is, is the equivalent of the choppers leaving the top of the embassy in Saigon. That's what this is. That's the modern equivalent of that. And the hashtag has, again, a humble role to play in it. Here are some examples of it being used in media, in, jur in journalism. And this particular one I thought was very interesting. There was a moment, for anyone who is a Knicks fan, of something called Lin Sanity that took place uh, up in, uh, in, in New York. And Sports Illustrated put the hash SI Linsanity hashtag on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And I thought it was a really good idea. And it's a good idea because, again, you give that digital fence and people can see uh, where that goes and, uh, and kind of track it and, and let people, help people respond and uh, participate in, your, uh, in the things you're trying to uh, share with the world. Here is an, an example. I've written more than 40 articles for the New York Times, but the only time I've been on the front page of the Times website was because of a hashtag. Uh, the Times was running uh, as, as part of the Steve Jobs death, was asking for people to, to tag things with hash Steve Jobs legacy. And so I tweeted something. It said, a lot of people who like to think I'm a PC have an iPod, iPhone, or iPad, or all three hash Steve Jobs legacy, and that ends up on the front page of the New York Times website for maybe just a moment, but it was there, and I didn't see it. A friend of mine named Bill Swersey found it and sent it to me, and that's how I was able to capture that. And one of the things that hashtags help you, help you do is make more permanent one of the big problems of social media is that it just disappears so quickly and makes it, helps make it in a tiny way a little more permanent, and that's one of the things I'd like you to think about. Every major story, project, uh, cover, I believe, is a candidate for a hashtag strategy, and that we should all be thinking about what can we do to have a hashtag strategy. But just because every story can have a hashtag doesn't mean it should have a hashtag. So I'd like you to think if you're doing a project, uh, often I will see these big uh, projects or big series, especially around the elections that uh, come out in all, you know, all the big newspapers and the smaller newspapers. Be nice if they came with a hashtag that was in the printed paper. The next step is to also have a, uh, a sample tweet to go with it. You help people along by giving them a hashtag, giving them a sample tweet. And you don't do this on every story because it'd be really irritating. But I think you can do that. And some of you would say, this will never happen. I know I argued for a long time for the idea of putting email addresses in bylines, with bylines. And now you see that in a lot of places, not because I suggested it, but because it's a good idea. And I spend between three and six minutes trying to carve, uh, craft every tweet I do. It's because I don't have a real life. But, when I, but the idea also is to think through, is there a hashtag that can go with that? Do I have the right writer's correct Twitter handle? And you hate it when you make a mistake on, on the Twitter handles. And it would be wonderful if journalists and journalism organizations would put Twitter handles next to the stories. It's so uh, irritating to waste time trying to find this stuff. And therefore, people aren't able to participate as much as they can. Now, here's some advice about, uh, about hashtags. They should be the shortest possible, unique, and memorable phrase that you can find. And the keywords there are shortest possible, unique, and then, of course, memorable. 
meaning that people will remember. Uh, and so we have TEDx Pointer, some others that I've uh, worked with and used and I recommend to people uh, to think about. I created one called Save, Read, Share. If you put that on Twitter, then others will be encouraged that this is something that has legs and is worth looking at again. So hash, save, read, share. I use hash cool new tools. There's so many tools out there. When you find something new and you tweet it, use, think about using something like hash cool new tools. And then these are others that I created for just some of the things we do up at Columbia, Social Media Weekend, uh, which is something we do in January every year. And that has uh, people come from around the world to talk about social media for my social media classes, Columbia Journalism, social media, and then here are all the hashtags we use for each class. When a class, uh, when a group of students are, are admitted to Columbia J School, the first thing we do is we create a Facebook group and we create a hashtag for them and we encourage them to use it and thousands and thousands of tweets go out using the hashtag. It's a great way for us to get to know our students and since we introduced the hashtag, we believe we know our students better coming in than we did before, and it's a way for us to keep in touch with them throughout the year. The problem, of course, is how do you track all these hashtags, and tools like TagDef and Topsy can help you do that. So TagDef, Topsy are places you should be uh, checking out as well. So my advice about hashtags is to be almost obnoxious in getting them into your audience's heads, meaning if it's not obvious, hash TEDx pointer is obvious, but people will still use hash pointer because they didn't think about it. So be semi or almost obnoxious. And we did that with Social Media Weekend. And we use this tool called Hash Tracking, which is a new service that you can uh, check out. And at the Social Media Weekend, we had just 500 people from 12 countries attend this year. But we had 2,000 contributors and 12,000 tweets that we were able to track. And as a result, we got a reach of 8.4 million people who are followers of these 2,000 contributors. And we had 45 million impressions. And why is this useful in journalism? Because not only are you able to make that digital fence to gather everybody together, but you're also using it to uh, maybe go to your uh, sponsors or advertisers or, or people who are giving you a grant. And you say, look, we only had 30 people attend the event or 300 people read the story, but look how many more people saw it. Also makes great transcripts of the entire conversation. And I know we're doing a hash tracking of this, uh, of, of TEDx uh, as well. Uh, here is another example. Uh, Muckrack is a site that I recommend to everyone who uh, is, wants to track journalists on, on Twitter. And we were trending at one point uh, at, on one of the conversations I did because we were semi-obnoxious, or maybe some people would say actually obnoxious about this. So how obnoxious can you get? On a visible tweets wall at uh, the Lucille, we have something called Lucille's Ball, which is named after the granddaughter of Joseph Pulitzer. And so this is our faculty roast and dance. We had a Twitter wall running. And you can see all the hashtags that show up there, just like the wall we have here. But as somebody pointed out, this is like a high school dance, but with Twitter. And there's, of course, a hashtag to go with it. So I wanted to um, end on a couple of quick things. One is to show you something new. This just launched this week. And I'll say it's new to me. It may not be new to you. But this is called Seesaw. And it's S-E-E-S -E -E dot A-W. And it uses hashtags to present what uh, a curated wall of the uh, posts that you're doing. So if you go in there and type in TEDx Pointer, you'll get this really nice auto-scrolling wall. This is just so new and just, just created. So definitely check it out. And it's C-E-E-S dot A-W. And you'll have some fun looking through that, I hope, when you get a chance. But I didn't want to leave without giving you my social media success formula. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have you participate in it. I'm sure I'm breaking some TEDx law here. Uh, but here's what you do. I'm going to show you a series of words that are the social media success formula. And it's a series of words. You will say them out loud, and they will be absorbed into your soul and your chakras. And how this works is we're going to pretend we're in church on Sunday led by a Hindu priest, which is fairly unusual. So that's a new step for all of you. So everybody ready? Just a series of words. We're going to read them loud and clear and have a minute 25 to do this. So let's go. Ready? Helpful, useful, 
Louder. I can't hear you. Alleluia. Sing it, sister. Say it, brother. Amen. That's the way you do it, right? So uh, just wanted to give you a sense of what I think works on social media is making sure your posts, your tweets, anything you do, you think about it from an audience point of view and does it fit in and you don't have to have all these adjectives in, uh, in everything you're doing, you know, all, all these attributes in everything you're doing, but think about getting as many of them right as possible and your social media success will ab absolutely happen. Thank you very much, everybody.